Hello, in this video, I am going to show you how to set up a Flutter project or set up Flutter to create projects on your Mac for running on iOS. If you're interested on, you know, setting you up for another platform like Linux or Windows, I've got videos covering that. I've also got a video covering if you want to set up Flutter on Mac for Android, so you can do maybe iOS and Android development at the same time, then, you know, check out that video. If you want to do iOS and Android, then check this video and that video out. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do, I'm sure you've already got it, but is install Xcode. You can get this from the App Store. So if you just download the App Store, I mean, if you open up the App Store, and you search for Xcode and I've already got it installed. Download it, install it, install the simulating, I'll just get all of that stuff done. Once you've done that, that's like a prerequisite. Once you've done that, what you want to do is launch up a web browser and literally Google Flutter. I'll provide links to all of this so you can, you know, not, so you don't have to type it out yourself. And just go to flutter.io, go to get started, Mac OS, and just click this. This will download the Flutter zip file. I'm going to cancel it. You don't need to cancel it. I'm doing it because I've already got it downloaded. Now, what we want to do is open it up. So it's right here. If you double click it, it will unzip it. And if we just wait for it to unzip this this framework and then we'll you know proceed with the next step okay so that's you know unzip this i recommend copying this folder go into applications create a folder called development and you can put all your all of your development frameworks in, in here and paste it here. I've already got it pasted, so I'm not going to paste it again, but let's paste it here. So you got it like so, Flutter. Now what you want to do is set up Flutter so it's linked with your, essentially your system path variable, which means when you open up terminal, you can access Flutter without having to always navigate to this directory. Because if you look, there's a Flutter you know, file here. And we can run this so we could CD to this directory in our terminal and run it. but that's not very good if we want to run Flutter, if we have to always change directory to this folder. So what we're going to do is essentially, you know, add it to our path. To do that, it is pretty simple. If you open up terminal and in the terminal, what you want to do is we need to type in CD and put the tilde forward slash this will take us back to our home folder if you're not already in there, but by default it should be. Now you want to type in touch dot bash underscore profile. So what this does, it creates a file called dot bash profile if it doesn't already exist in your home directory. It does for me, and as you see when I open, there will already be some you know lines of you know commands in there yours will most likely be empty, but that's just because it probably is a new file for you. Click enter, that's created it. Now we need to open it. We can open it by doing open dash e dot bash underscore profile. This opens it in text edit. And like I said, all of this was added before. I added this just before the video, but this is essentially what we need to add. So what I want you to do is, I'm gonna get rid of this. I want you to add this. I want to add export space path all uppercase equals quotation marks dollar path all uppercase colon quotation mark but before the closing quotation mark here is where we need to put this bin folder so if you literally drag this over here you'll get its path yours will most likely look different to me my that the quotation mark should be there sorry yours will look most likely slightly different to mine or it might it might not it might be the exact same path save that close it and now we just need to essentially you know you know commit it to do that you do source dot bash underscore profile now if we want to do open as you can see it's right here so that's what we want to do 
Now, if we were to run the flutter command, flutter doctor, this will essentially just analyze the essentially the installation, the setup for flutter, and let us know if there's anything wrong. Yours will look slightly different. Yours will most likely have more, you know, errors and crosses, and I'm going to explain them in a moment. Okay, so this should be ticked for you if the previous step that we just did was successful. If you have a problem at any part of this video, feel free to pop me a message. This step doesn't matter for this video. We're covering that in a separate Android setup video for Mac. Same for this one. This is irrelevant unless you absolutely want to use IntelliJ. That's optional, you know, for iOS or Android. It doesn't really matter. And we've got no device connected. You can connect a device, you know, set it up via Xcode using the provisioning process files as you normally would for any iOS app development where we are going to be using the simulator that is still considered a device. But as it's not open, hence why this is essentially giving us a warning. But this is insignificant. This is the one I'm interested in. For me, it's ticked. For you, most likely you're gonna have a cross. Not only that, it's gonna be moaning about a whole bunch of different things about installing this, about installing that, and that's what we are going to cover right now. So to essentially set all of that up, it's really simple. First of all, if you go to your web browser again and Google Homebrew, and then go to brew.sh, and I'm going to copy this. So I'm going to copy all of this, copy that. And this is a package manager that allows you to install frameworks and packages in terminal really easily. And if we open up terminal, and if we right click, paste in here, this is where you would click enter. I'm not gonna click enter because I've already got it installed. So you would click enter at that point. So let me just delete this. It will take a little bit of time. If you ask for your password, put the password in, you might need that to install some things. Also, the password will not appear in terminal. So when you're typing, it is actually being, you know, you know, input. So don't worry about that. Once that's installed and it's all successful, what you want to do is type in brew update. Brew is the command for homebrew, and this will just update homebrew. Most likely it should be already up to date, but if not, maybe you have an older version or you install it, then go away for maybe a day or two and the new version released. But this is what you need to do. Then you want to run the command brew install dash dash head usb usb muxd again yours is going to take longer than this and you will not get this warning because i've already got it installed next you need to do brew link usb muxd so you need to link it up I'm going to get a warning because it's already linked. You will not get a warning. You will have a successful linkage. Next, you need to do brew install dash dash head lib iMobile device. This allows you to you know, essentially connect to you know iPhones, iPads, that sort of stuff. Click enter. Again, I'm going to get a warning because I've already got it installed. You most likely will not. Next, we need to do brew install iDevice installer iOS dash deploy Coco pods. Click enter. I've already, you know, installed this, so it, you know, shouldn't do anything for me. It should just give me a warning. Again, some of these commands can take a bit of time, so just be patient. The, the last thing you want to do is pod set up. This, this sets up Cocoa Pods. And um, spell set up quickly. Click enter. I'm not going to click enter because honestly, I can't remember whether you're giving me a warning or not, or just do the installation again. And the installation took me about 10 minutes. So this, this command will take the longest of all the commands in this video. So click enter. I'm deleting it because I've already done it. Once you've done that, you're actually all ready to go to create your first Flutter project. Now, what we need to do is navigate using our terminal to where we want our you know Flutter project created. I want it on the desktop. I'm going to put CD desktop. Now I'm on the desktop. To create a Flutter project is really, really simple. All we need to do is type in Flutter. 
create and now put the name of our app it has to be all lowercase so if i put all uppercase or if i put an uppercase a it will give me a warning saying that it needs to be lowercase and there's some other conditions you can read here as well so if i put lowercase app for example that will now create a folder with our project in there so all done almost it's almost complete and now it's all done this essentially has just recheck this and i recommend you doing flutter doctor again just to make sure especially this one and this one are ticked if not if there's anything still moaning maybe there's a suggestion there of a command to run run it if there is if not feel free to put me a message now you can run the flutter app in two ways you can run it using this which essentially you do cd app or you do cd and drag this folder on this is the more universal way and then do flutter run and as you can see it's given an error because there's no device connected so if i was to run the simulator assuming you've already you know installed it and the type of simulator that you want to do is to totally up to you you can change the device if you want to you can you know do a lot of stuff here but it doesn't really matter and now if i was to do flutter run It is launching it. It has now located a device that has been connected. In this case, it is the simulator. And any moment now, it will run this default app. And if there were any, you know, sort of errors in your code, they will be displayed here as well. So this has launched. Essentially, this default application just counts how many times we have clicked this button. Okay, what I want to do is, so to quit, we can just do Q. The way I want to show you is if we quit out of this, another way to run it is via Xcode. So if you open up your app folder, go to iOS, go to runner.xcode prod. So this is the Xcode project. Double click that and open up the Xcode project. And now in here, you can essentially just select a emulator or an actual device itself if you've already got that set up click run and it will you know build the project compile it and it will launch it up and it will launch the emulator as well so that's the good thing about xcode if you don't have the emulator open or you know something to do with the device if it's able to launch it and open it it will and any moment now it will show our application and here we go if we there we go if we click it it picks up how many times we've clicked it and the great thing about this we can do a lot of debugging in xcode as well we can just quit it like so to edit the code it isn't you know over here none of the code is so the way you would need to edit it is outside of xcode and the code is located in lib main.dart. So all of that that you saw is produced from main.dart. And you can open that in a text editor like Sublime or, you know, even something simple like text edit or something more complex like Visual Studio Code, Sublime, Atom is totally up to you or brackets, for example. That's it for this video. Like I said, there are separate videos covering the Linux and the Windows setup. There's another video covering Android setup on Mac. Feel free to check that out. If you have any questions though, feel free to pop me a message. And as usual, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.